What is going on, everybody? It is Friday, October the 22nd, and that means it's time for my News Radar. The first piece of news I've got for you today has been something that we've been waiting for for quite some time. Obviously, Windows 11 is now released to the public. You can download this thing quite easily. However, for those of us that are on the beta channel via the Insider Preview, we actually now have access to a test, an early test here of Android apps on Windows 11. And there's some instructions here. It's really straightforward, but it's on uh, the blog.windows.com website. Basically, all you have to do is make sure you're on the beta channel of the Windows Insider update. And then from there, you can simply go to the Microsoft Store and download the Amazon App Store preview. After doing that, you can launch the Amazon App Store, download some apps that are there, and run them inside your Windows device. And it does seem to be working quite well. In fact, I did this little live stream the other day kind of showing what apps were in the App Store currently. It's pretty limited. There's just a handful of games and, and apps in there right now. A lot of like children's games and so forth that were in there. But I did wind up installing a couple of apps like the Android version of the Kindle app and that did work just fine. The Washington Post app worked just fine as well. This is kind of a weird scene. Uh, to me, so we'll stop doing that now currently. Uh, but it does work pretty well. The biggest problem right now is that there just aren't that many apps there in the test to be testing. Now, that thing, that problem can be addressed by sideloading. And there are instructions here on mspoweruser.com of exactly how to accomplish this. Now, I've not tried it just yet, but it's something that I'm going to try in the coming days and weeks, probably very soon. And I'll probably post a video exactly how to do it, kind of walking through it. But basically, sideloading allows you to install whatever Android app you want to install, so long as it's not reliant upon the Google Play services, as you see down here, because the Google Play services are a thing in this Windows subsystem for Android that we're playing with here on Windows 11. But it does look pretty simple. You can see this tweet here from a friend of the channel showing his uh, apps that he has sideloaded and so forth, actually sideloading quite a few things. Instagram, everything seems to be working really really well really cool stuff and i'm happy to see that it's finally here finally being properly shown off and tested sticking with windows 11 there is a weird bug a weird performance bug in windows 11 that was really hurting apparently the performance of amd processors some of these ryzen chips on windows 11 it appears that finally Microsoft has updated this and made it better. I think their first update actually made it worse, but now they've actually fixed this. So if you've had concerns about running your AMD uh, system, running Windows 11 because your performance is gonna be hurt, this appears to be fixed in this latest update. You can see your Ryzen processors at launch were slowing down by up to 15% in certain games, which is extremely significant as you see here. Yes, they did actually make it worse, but today's update, should now fix that problem. It's good to see some of these bug fixes coming to Windows 11 early on. I think it's already a pretty solid operating system that I'm pretty happy with. I'll actually have a review of the Surface Pro 7 running Windows 11 here very shortly. I've got it mostly pieced together, but the Android stuff dropped right as I was getting ready to finalize that video. So we've had to kind of pump the brakes a little bit, reassess, but I will have that coming here in the next uh, few days and weeks as well. And now let's jump into what I think everybody on this channel is still buzzing and talking about, and that is Surface Duo 2. So we've had a lot of early reviews that have come out for Surface Duo 2. I think a lot of these people have had the device for a couple of days before posting their review. So maybe that's quick to do a proper review. I don't know. I'll, I'll stay off that topic. But what I've done here on Twitter is I put together kind of a super list of different takes and different sorts of points uh, Surface Duo reviewers have made thus far, and we're just going to kind of run through them real quick, and I'll kind of tell you what I think. One of the overarching points here that you're going to see, though, is that Surface Duo 2 takes a big step forward, but a lot of these reviewers felt like it still wasn't quite far enough forward, that there still are some problems. This here came from uh, The Verge, where they said at $1,500, Everything about Duo 2 is a tall task. You could accomplish much of the same with an iPad mini along with, uh, alongside your phone for a third of the price. If the first Duo felt like it was half complete, this one maybe feels like it's 75% of the way there. I can see potential, but it doesn't live up to it. 
unfortunately. And I can see where they're coming from to some degree. I still would argue that having two screens is still always going to be different than having one big screen, but I can kind of see what they're getting at here. TechCrunch has a similar take saying that Microsoft has done a decent job working with the camera bump, but they feel like using the thing is a pain due to the fact that it feels like you're taking a picture with a tablet. And I can kind of see where they're coming from there. I've not been super bothered by this, but it may be something that fatigues me over time. Time will tell in that. They do seem to overall think it is nice hardware. They like some of the additions like the new pin, the glance bar, and the new camera seems to be better. But they do think that there are too many issues at that price to warrant the thing just yet. CNET talked a little bit about not enjoying spanning content across both screens, which is something I still just don't understand. We're talking about a dual screen phone, right? So if you're looking at a dual monitor computer, you wouldn't take Netflix and then stretch it across both your monitors and then complain that you're, you've are you got a big gap in the middle, right? That just wouldn't be something that you would think to do. Yet, in a lot of these reviews, that's exactly what we wind up doing. We span video across it and then complain that that doesn't work well. I don't understand why you would think to do that, why that would be something you would want to try to do. This is a dual monitor setup. This isn't the same thing as a tablet, so stop trying to span videos and then complaining when it doesn't work well. Get a Z Fold. If you want a big screen, a big tablet that folds up, get a Z Fold. That's not what Surface Duo is. Engadget had kind of a weird complaint about the camera where they complained that in the camera they felt like you didn't have proper control because if you're here taking a picture, everything's fine, but once you move the camera past 180 degrees, it will actually disable the primary camera and switch you to the selfie camera. Now, I would argue that that actually makes sense because let me open up the camera app here and I'll kind of show you what I mean. Because if you're here and you're taking a picture, that does make sense. But if you go and you fold it past here at a certain point, you'll see that it does switch to the selfie camera. And the reason it does that is because much further past here and you're just going to be taking a picture of the back of the phone. So I think it's actually kind of intelligent that it switches you to the selfie shooter once you're bent back so far around. That seems to me to be rather intelligent. However, for this Engadget reviewer, who, you know, a lot of the points in the review that she made, I thought were, were perfectly reasonable, but this seemed rather curious, rather strange to me. This just seems like an intelligent optimization. Uh, why would you want to be able to take a picture of the back of your own device? It just seems... Seems strange to me, but whatever. Daniel Rubino over at Windows Central kind of was more in line with how I feel. It is a big step forward. There's a lot that is much, much better on Surface Duo 2, but there are some strange problems that are still, as he says here, unacceptable. There are still bugs. There are still some software problems, some weird missing animations like he mentions here. This is still a problem. And most consumers would probably be well advised to still hold off and see what happens with these early software updates. I feel like PC Mag has a pretty good take here, and I agree, I agree with a lot of what they're saying. Surface Duo 2 is the Wolverine of mobile multitasking. I'm the best at what I do, but sometimes what I do doesn't look very nice. I think that is a really, really good quote for Surface Duo 2. I could not agree more with what they just said there. You can read the rest of this here on screen if you want to pause. And of course, I've told you where all these come from, so feel free to go search out the links. PC Mag also does include benchmarking here, which you can see Surface Duo 2 does hold its own with a lot of modern phones. The OnePlus 9 Pro, for some reason, just kicks everybody's butt. The Surface Duo 2 is right there, hanging tough with the Z Fold 3. And of course, I will have my full review coming up in the next few days. I can't review a phone in two days. That's just not possible. I can't possibly let battery life settle and give you an idea of what the battery life is going to be in two days and three days. It's probably going to take just a few more days to uh, really get a good feel of what's going on here. And that will, of course, be on the channel. So make sure you are subscribed so that you do not miss that. I do also want to point out a weird bug that's popped up, maybe one of the biggest bugs I've seen so far, but luckily it is easy to fix. If you're a Surface Duo user and you're using a pair of high in, higher end wireless earbuds or headphones and you're having weird Bluetooth problems here, there is a fix for this. So what's happening here on my uh, Liberty Air 2 Pros or Liberty Air Pro 2s, I don't remember exactly, something like that. I was having this weird issue where if I walked away, basically my signal was terrible, way worse than it was even on the original Surface Duo. Then I went into my settings and I disabled LDAC, which is a higher end codec. And I basically said, 
go with connection quality instead. This was actually a feature they just added to these earbuds, so I hadn't had it for long. So I turned it back off, totally fixes the Bluetooth problem. In, in fact, I'm now able to walk all through my house and my, my Bluetooth is totally fine. I'll show you a video here demonstrating Bluetooth signal on my Surface headphones and how much better it is than it was on the original Surface Duo. And I'll show you that video now. So here's something that might make people who had Surface Duo 1 and had some Bluetooth uh, range issues maybe feel a little bit better. Let's go ahead and hit play here. Okay, now we're just gonna go walk away, all right? My house is weirdly shaped. You can still hear this. We're just gonna, I'm gonna use the headphones to block my messy house. But we, we've walked clear around a corner, right? We've got like walls and stuff in between us and we're still getting audio. This was something that the original Surface Duo uh, would just fail miserably at. It would, it would drop this Bluetooth connection way before I got that far away. So there's a positive thing. So by simply just changing this one setting, that's the kind of signal that you can expect to have on your Surface Duo 2. I've actually heard from a few people on Twitter that have had similar issues on other phones. So maybe this is just a weird codec problem that isn't working well on some devices. Not something I'm super freaked out about on Surface Duo in particular because it's so easy to fix. Guys, that's all the news I have for you today. Be sure to check back every Monday and Friday for the next episode of News Radar, if you've wanted to support the channel, please do just click that join button down below like many of you already have. Thank you so much for doing that. Stay tuned for more content just like this. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any more. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends. <laughs>